Greetings. In this assignment, we'll be doing two things. The first is we're going to encapsulate our entire graph structure inside a new class called Graph. And Graph is going to control how we build the graphs themselves. Um, we're going to provide a bunch of methods that should make it a lot easier. So here's an example. Let's say we wanted to create a graph that looked like this. So we've got hall. Hall connects to dungeon in a one-directional way. Hall connects to closet in a bi-directional way. Um, the way it's going to work is over here in the code, our graph object is saved inside the variable g. So we'll first add a bunch of nodes. Notice that we're not actually giving it node objects. We're just giving it names. And we'll let graph itself handle the creation of the node objects. Also notice that we're not making any connections yet. We're not saying who's the neighbor of who. So we're really just adding a bunch of unconnected nodes to our graph. And then afterwards, we add the connections. There's going to be two different types of connections. Directed edge. Remember, all of these connections are called edges. So a directed edge is an edge that you can only travel along in one direction. So it's um, directed from the hall to the dungeon, for example. An undirected edge is an edge that you can travel both directions. We're not actually going to represent those as a separate thing, but the method add undirected edge is actually going to add two directed edges, uh, one in each direction. So for example, once we've created the hall and the closet and the dungeon nodes, we'll add a directed edge from the hall to the dungeon. Then we'll add an undirected edge between the hall and the closet. And that's going to add both this one and that one. The last method that we want in our graph class is getNode, where we give it the name of a node, and it returns the node object. Um, and notice that we're asking the graph for the node. We're not asking a particular node for a neighbor that has a particular name. So this should return any node in the entire graph. Let's get started on this together, because I want you to actually modify your current implementation. I'm going to show you a new piece of Java called an inner class. Here's the way it's going to work. So here inside graph, um, well, let's come back to that. So here inside graph, I've got an empty constructor right now. Let's go ahead and add skeleton code for all the methods we need. So here inside main, you may not know this, but you can hover over the method, say create method. And notice that this has now created the appropriate method inside graph. Uh, the only thing to notice about these is they probably have bad parameter names. So I don't want to call it string. I'm going to call it name. So let's just go through and create all the methods we need. Oops. OK, and now I want to change all the names. So directed edge, I'll call this name1 and name2. Same thing here, name1, name2, get node name. Great. All right, so I've got all the, the template code I need. Um, here's the new part. The new part is we're going to create we're going to move the node class from being its own class in its own file. And we're going to actually create the class here inside of the graph class. You probably didn't know you can do that, public class node. So you probably didn't know you could do that. Um, this is what's called an inner class. And I'll tell you, first let's do it, and then I'll tell you why you might want to do it. So I'll go into node. I'm going to select all of the insides of node. There they are. And now I'm going to paste them inside here. And then I'm going to delete node. OK, the first thing to notice is now node is no longer a valid data type. Instead, because it's inside graph, we refer to it as graph.node, because it is a class that is inside another class. So you can consistently refer to the node data type as graph.node. OK, here's the second thing. So, so the question is, why would we want to do this? The reason why you would use an inner class is for two reasons. One is if the node class is only ever going to be used by the graph class, or if it's strongly associated with the graph class. This lets us control how other pieces of code interact with the node class. So for example, I want the graph to be in charge of creating nodes and connecting them together. So I don't actually don't want to let people say new node hall. I don't want to let other people instantiate node. Oh, sorry, I forgot we're graph.node now. Um, nonetheless, I don't want to let people do this. 
I also don't want to let people say n dot add neighbor and add neighbors to things because all of these are things that I want the graph to do for the user. So what we can do is notice that there are no compile time errors here now, but if I go inside graph, I can mark my constructor as private. I can mark add neighbor as private. And now here back in main, it's no longer allowing me to uh, run the constructor or add neighbor. However, even though they're private, I can still run them from inside graph. So the graph itself can do all that work of doing the constructing and the connecting. So that's the reason to use an inner class. Um, I also just wanted to show it to you because it's something that happens a moderate amount in code that you'll encounter in the wild. So I just don't want you to be freaked out by it. So the first part of your assignment is going to be to do what I just did and then to fill in the bodies of all of these empty methods. Um, before we do that, Notice that if, if get node is going to do what it's supposed to do, we give it a name and it returns the node that has that name. The graph object itself is going to need to have a list of node objects that's all that represent all of the nodes. So every single node in the whole graph is going to be inside this list. So that way, if we want to get a node, we just iterate over, find the node that's got the right name, and return it. Um, you might be wondering why I said list here instead of array list. List is actually an interface. So I can say new array list just fine. And that can get stored inside the list interface. Um, this is also something that's very common and that you'll see a lot. OK, so last pointer here. The graph class should use the node class's methods as much as possible. So for example, for add directed edge, we would want to do something like this. I've got two names. So what I'd want to do is get, get node for name one. Then I'd want to get node for name two. And now that I have two nodes, I can say n1.addNeighbor n2. So I will let the node class handle uh, adding the edges. Um, it's just the graph class that is directing those actions. OK, so that's part one. OK, here's part two. Part two is we're going to modify the tester part of main. So we're going to start with the same current room variable, but this time we're going to ask our graph to get the hall node. So we're starting in the hall, same as before. The only difference is now there's going to be a bunch of commands. So it will start by displaying what are all the commands that they can type so that they know what to do. And the commands are going to be uh, go, look, add room, and quit. So you're going to start by telling them what they can do. Then it will display the name of the room they're in. But I want you to remove the part where it displays the possible neighbors of that room. Instead, just say, what do you want to do? So if they type go and then a room name, it should check to make sure that this room name is actually a neighbor of the current room. And if it is, allow them to go there. If they type look, that should do the same thing that it used to do, which is display a list of all of the neighbors of their current room. If they type add room, this is a way that we can allow level building from the player themselves. So let's say that they're in the dungeon and there are no exits from the dungeon. They can say add room. Um, outside and that should ask the graph to create a new node called outside and then create an a edge from the current room to the outside um, and we, you should be able to do that just by using the graph methods um, one thing you can't do with our current setup is you're actually not able to add an exit back to an existing room um, which would be an interesting thing to try okay if they type quit it should just quit um, and otherwise, if they type anything else, it should display the same thing that it displays up here. It should display a list of all of the commands that they can type so that they know what to do.